All right, welcome to class six, part three, redo. We're gonna, we lost a little bit of our connection there, so, um, which is great because it gives me a chance to start fresh. Um, Did you spotlight? So I'm gonna try to do a 30 brushstroke challenge here. All right, what was that? Spotlight. I believe it is. Yep, it is. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, here we go again. So I'm going to quickly rough in and I'm going to see how much I can get done with each brush stroke here. So, what kind of a brush is that, Michael? Is that one of your chip brushes or is exactly. it right? Yeah, and so you can see I've double loaded the brush, I got a little bit of blue on there, a lot of red, and I'm just going to use this red to kind of give me my form and structure, uh, kind of my big shapes. So First thing is my horizon line right about the third way mark here. And again, we're going to count each brush stroke as we lift. So I'm going to get some trees. And I'm going to kind of tell myself where my kind of my water might be down below here. I'm going to be a little more brutal. Now I'm going to flip it over to the other side of the brush and get that, start using some of that blue to kind of start to give me some of the darks. Don't see how you can draw in your paintings with your brush. I just know how. <laughs> Practice. He's got red on one side of the brush and blue on the other side of the brush. Because <laughs> got a lot of blue on it. Would have been nice. You should have loaded that brush up a little more. So the blue didn't go that far. So there's one. <clears throat> now I'm going to get into those darks. I'm going to use my palette knife here. This is some kind of older paint from previous painting. So it's a little bit uh, sticky. A different and I'm just making a big dark. Is that cad red or uh, oh, no? It's not I, them, and I've got a little I, bit of cad red okay. there. I'll probably have to bring in some of that cad because this color is wanting to go very green. So the cad red should kind of neutralize it. Is that like and, 12, 12 by 16? Yeah, 12 by 16. Your cad red looks almost like Indian yellow, it's very light orangey color. Yeah, it's right beside each other. The Indian yellow is literally right. Oh, beside. I see. I see. They're very close in value, yeah. aren't they? It is interesting. And here's the other thing is I've got my palette with all the colors from when I was painting those yeah. ladies. And so I may just dip into some of these because this is just a great wow. way to use up. Um, but yeah, look at all those greens. So this is a good way to use up old paint at the end of the day. <laughs> kind of what I've been using it for is um, just kind of, uh, yeah, using old paint, uh, mm -hmm. having fun experimenting with um, brush strokes and just kind of the different textures and things. You said that's a Rubbermaid or, di or uh, Tupperware or something? Yeah, it's a big Tupperware thing. It's actually made for um, acrylic paintings. Yeah, has a lid. It's a stay wet palette. Oh, oh, okay, okay. But I have yeah. like three of them. Four, I have four of them now. And one I use specifically for my oils because I can, you know, put the lid on, put it in the freezer if I know I'm going to be away for the weekend or whatever. But just putting the lid on a little bit to stay. And then I also have a little uh, towel ball in here that I will put some um, and so on. Clove oil? Clove oil, yeah. I just put a couple of drops of that, and it just seems to keep the paint uh, wet longer. All right, now I'm going to jump into the duck. Here we go. They're less fibers. Mm 
And hopefully within, you know, the first two big strokes here, I will be able to get just a huge amount covered and just kind of really picking out what's the most important thing. So, you know, I'm just really using that to just So it's almost like a no tan painting, meaning just lights and darks. And then I, I guess because it's uh, doing 30 brush strokes, I'm gonna have to come across at the very end and do those uh, vertical brush strokes so that it doesn't have all the glare on it. But I can't do that right now because it'll count against me as my strokes. <laughs> Now I can just kind of come with a really light touch, still just kind of dragging the paint that's there, letting it make kind of some interesting marks, hopefully. There we go. So two brush strokes. And- Well, now I understand how you do that with 30 brush strokes. Yeah. He cheats. He cheats. That's <laughs> what I think. Dirty little cheater. <laughs> I'm a big cheater. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. I haven't really thought of what I want to do with the sky. So looking around my studio to see if anything inspires me. You want to try a mop brush? What colors? I'm going to go. I have an idea. I thought you were going to paint one of my, my photographs. I am going to for the next one. I just what, what okay. I'm experimenting. I like to start with something that's a little more comforting. Okay. Yeah. Be comfortable. Yeah, be a little bit here. So I'm just double dipping into some of these colors. So I grabbed some of this kind of fuchsia color and some of this gray blue. And I'm going to even triple dip a little bit here. So now I've got three different colors on there. <laughs> I want the top of my sky to be a little warmer or cooler, and then it's going to go down to the warmer. So I'm going to start with the top cooler side of my brush. Slowly let that other side of the brush get in there, let it start to play. Now, if perchance you did a little wipe away on here, are you going to count your wipe away as any kind of a brush stroke? I don't know. We're making the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's say that a wipe away is a brush stroke. I think okay. I'm uh, just checking. <laughs> just checking. Yeah. You're trying to keep him from cheating. I'm trying to keep some accountability going here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. right. right. Ooh, got dark. All right, now how, how do, do you I drag it down in, into the into the creek? Uh, technically, he could run along the rim of the painting and do that. If he, there you go. <laughs> okay. <I'm Hold> up. <laughs> and he's putting shadows in the water. This kind of goes back to previous class when we were doing abstracts. Yeah. <laughs> but right. Mike. Yeah. What is that, three strokes? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Right. Watching the videos, the old videos, um, I see that uh, it's been said that Michael's abstracts all are landscapes. They are all. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep this brush going for one more time, and then I'll probably move to a slightly smaller brush. Yes, and I think you're right. I think a wipe away with will count it as a stroke will be kind of fun. I haven't done that yet with uh, other ones. So let's. But I think that if you're switching your finger under the paper towel, I don't think that should count as another oh, stroke. Wow, you're very generous. Oh, come on. <laughs> Because you have to do that. You have to keep switching it. And if you slide it while it's still on the painting, 
You'd have to slide it along, 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 up, along the rim. Yeah. As long as it's not so leaving the canvas. I right. say we let him cheat. I think we're really uh, learning here who uh, wants to torture me and who's... <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to give you grace? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Grace, grace, grace. <laughs> grace, grace. Like, you know, I just want to see how far I can get in 30 strokes. And it doesn't mean the painting's done, right? I can always just say, okay, you know, but I just want to see how far we can get with 30 strokes. So we're going to, I'm going to try to be as pure and, you know, because already I got a super big mess, don't I? Holy cow. No, no, no. I can see possibilities. All right. And Michael, all I thought was that just one movement was a stroke. So now you have really given us leeway. All of that wiggling all over that canvas. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. And you know what? It'll help That's us. That's a technical us. term, all that wiggling. All that, that wiggling. All that wiggling. <laughs> All right, so again, I've kind of double dipped. I've got some pink on one side, but I want more probably yellowish color in there. So I can get some, because uh, right now it's all very dark. So I'm going to kind of come back in. And I'm, to do wet on the wet, I'm going to be thinking about the pressure that I'm pushing. Because if I push hard, it's going to pick up a lot of that purple. But if I push a little lighter, it should skim across the top, ideally, hopefully. So let's see. Look at those wiggles. Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle. Take that down. It's, what a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Burning my brush. <laughs> oh, started, oh, no, I got to my yellow too fast, darn it. All right, we'll have to see what that means. Oh, bye. Ooh. I think you and Anton should do one of these. Where yeah. you do the party. Yes. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Michael? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to be at the spring unveiling in Cannon Beach in May? Uh, Yeah, for a little bit of it. That's okay. What the ladies we're, was for. Yeah, we're thinking about going. Oh, good. And I'm very nervous now about that big yellow along my horizon. That was not intended to be there. Well, the wipe away, maybe. Yeah. I can't believe it's not getting muddy looking. It, it looks yeah. great. I Except know. for the waterfall coming from between my trees. Yeah. Well, I thought that would be <laughs> it's I sunshine. It's a <laughs> ball. Liquid sunshine. There you go. All right, I'm going to stick with this color for just a little bit. So I would like a little more light and color into that sky. So I'm going to go back to my pink, but make it slightly darker. That little black dot is driving me crazy. <laughs> I think oh, you right just here. moved it. No, the one right above your bush. Right there. there. Oh, oh, it's going to the corner. Oh, no. He's going to drop oh. it in the middle. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, God. It's got to come off. <laughs> there's two of them. Yeah. Yeah, there's one up the right. Up the right. right. Yeah, that's just because it's old paint, so you know how it gets those little dry clumps in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paint boogers. Yeah, you know. do those count as strokes? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's freelance, and he can do that. 
<laughs> you're what am I at? That was four. You're oh, relentless, yeah. Cheryl. Pardon me? <laughs> that was five. Yeah. Five. Okay, so here would be six. And do here with this. So I'm your gonna... sky is beautiful. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yes, it is. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, that yellow spot that I put over here is really hurting my feelings. I know. <laughs> that was six there, Michelle? What's that? That yes. was six? Yes. Okay. I think your trees, even though they're abstract-ish, are, are just really beautiful. I love them. Yeah. I love the way they look. Yeah. <laughs> How long did you say your professor would give you to do a 30 stroke? art piece oh i've never done it in an organized way oh okay okay i've given it as a challenge to my students before oh. <laughs> Did you yeah this i guess that's going to be fog <laughs> that works it's right. happy accident doing one more dash with dark to get kind of some of the structure back so this would be eight or seven i don't know seven eight I have eight. Eight. Okay. eight it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Very interesting. Oh my goodness, look at the depth in the trees. Yeah. I'll be curious when I kind of come with horizontal strokes because right now it's just so much glare with such thick wet paint. All right, I'm going to dip in and just grab some of these greens that I had pre mixed from. Oh man, they're dry though. I'm just going to. Does pre mixing count as a move? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I just want to get the rules straight. That's well, that's what I want you guys to learn is like, oh, you know, if I was slowing this down and maybe I'll do it with the one that I'm going to do for Linda of her, you know, scene is that, you know, maybe I spend more time mixing my colors and. Uh, that's you know, a good idea. Pretty right. good things. Grab a smaller brush slightly. Let's get some green on here. So by just changing the pressure, I'm telling it to sit on top or to mix in a little bit with some of the darks. And that's just a smaller chip brush? Yep. Can somebody refresh my memory why you call it a chip brush? I have no idea. It's just what they call it at the hardware store, you know? Oh, okay. It's cheap sure. and it's just like cheap bristles, like yeah. uh, hog hair bristles or something. Like a shop brush. Yeah. 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 yeah it's like a utility brush. And sometimes they call it like a cutting brush or something like that. Yeah. Like generally a little better. A cut in. Yeah. yeah. They usually have a better tip on them. Yeah. For cutting. Cutting is great. 
Now, how how many strokes is I that? I have nine. nine. It's nine. Look what he's done in nine strokes. He could stop right there. And, and a say, lot of wiggling. I agree. A lot of wiggling. <laughs> a lot of wiggling, okay. right. Michael, your water is just coming up and stopping. Okay. Is that good? <laughs> FYI. <laughs> it took a turn. Well, it took look, one look at that sky and said, okay, we're just going to stop here and oh, watch it. And reflect. <laughs> and reflect, yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you have some tall bushes right there where it goes behind them. It says here that the name implies chip brush used as a whisk or duster to remove dust and old paint chips from a mm. window sash. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. so it does make sense. Rough bristles, I imagine. Well, thank you. Thank you. Isn't, isn't it amazing what you can find out just Googling it? Oh, <laughs> Google is your friend. They ask if you uh, online a lot of times could you could you do without all this stuff? I don't want to do without it. I want to look stuff up when I want to look it up. I agree. All right, so this is ten, or that was ten. That was ten. This is eleven. Right. Boy, she's on you, Michael. You're not going to get away with anything. Nothing, no. Mm -hmm. You might not even need all thirty. Might need them just to get rid of the glare. Oh, right. <laughs> well, if you hold the brush right and you're going up and down, then you won't leave the you won't leave the canvas. So it's one stroke. Right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Just really soft. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe I can get away with that. I think you can. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to do that now. Um, just so I can see what the heck is going on on here. So let me grab a little soft fan brush. And you guys can decide if this counts or not. But I'm doing it so you guys can see it a little better. Um, it doesn't count. I don't uh, know. Well, we'll do this. I don't right. know. No. Oh, so my. Now, now you can see the. Mm. Oh, look at that beauty. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. <sighs> I think oh, you have an 11 stroke painting. Yeah, who said he could stop now? Because I, I agree with I that. I do. Yeah. I do think it's I think so. Yeah. I think you're done, Michael. All right. You <laughs> Michael, is there something else you want to do on that? I would just kind of start to refine it a little bit. But yeah, no, it might be a good spot to kind of stop. Like it. It's kind of interesting. You know, that big yellow spot kind of made it into a nice gray and then it pushed back back here. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. So was that yeah, last one 12? Yeah. Or did we stop at 11? 11. 11. Stop at 11. Well, there we go. <laughs> 11 breaststroke painting. Wow. 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 That's fantastic. <laughs> it really is lovely. That is so fantastic. Certainly is. All right. Well, I should be able to do about a hundred of these a day now. Yeah. <laughs> the most productive artist of all time. <laughs> well, that was a good warm up for uh, the next one should be a little scarier. I mean, there's definitely areas that are not, you know, refined or anything, but, you know, and then there's some weird things going on here that I could come through and touch up. Um, abstract. But all in all, you know, five, 10 minutes, a couple brush strokes, a lot of paint. The whole thing is covered with pretty thick paint. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get rid of I see one glary spot there right in the middle of this bush. Yeah. 14. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Beautiful. Just yeah, I like how the waterfall became just a misty fog back there. Right. Maybe yeah. then I see the colors even better if I change the mm. angle. It, and it, it walks the eye through the the tree bank uh, back to the sky. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really love like this little transition of purples to pink, mm -hmm. right? 
Mm-hmm. So you know, just things that like, you know, and if, even this weird little splotchy cloud looks so nice. Yeah, um, they very so natural. natural. They look really natural. Yeah, this transition I don't love right here from this pink to this blue. I would, you know, do something there, but all in no, all. No, Michael, I see that out here all the time. That purple and blue right there. Yeah. In my painting, the, the reference, it's like that all over the, the it's whole sky trip. blue pink. There yeah. All right. Well, oh, so natural. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh. All right. So we decided that was about 11 yes. strokes. So that's pretty fun. Yeah. Now, and I'm going to do that. This one for Linda. I'm going to work on the final painting before I do that. I feel like it didn't. Mm -hmm. all right so this one i'm going to use um a flat brush and it's a little smaller this is an eight by ten so i won't use the big shop brush for this one oh i'm like why can't i get in here it's because i moved the camera right to where i was standing <laughs> And right. Very few colors. That was a limited palette and, and just God grant you grace. You are good. You what color this I think we had about 13 different colors or shades of those colors. Yeah, and you guys, so you saw, you know, just wiggling and um, double dipping and even the one time I triple dipped the brush and just trying to think about that a little bit. It's really, you know, it's brush economy or brush stroke economy um, is interesting to think about. I'm not saying it's a great, you know, a good thing or a bad thing. It's just another thing to kind of, it's a fun challenge. And for somebody like me who likes to, you know, soften all the edges or, you know, over brush, you know, Mm -hmm. I push myself to kind of leave things a little bit and then also it's about you know mixing on the surface a little bit as well mm. there's a lot of different interesting things I'll not spend as much time cleaning <laughs> as I did painting evidently mm. Are you going to put an undercolor on this painting? Um, would you guys like me to? I thought I had a gray panel, but it's just white. Yeah. Well, we'll only color count it as one stroke if you want to put some undercolor. Right. right. Let me think. You guys <laughs> two or not two more. Are you doing uh, counted strokes on Linda's? Yeah. Too? Oh, it is. I thought you were just doing a quick. Uh, Much more complicated. <laughs> Practices, maybe. So mm -hmm. he may get to 15 strokes in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Brush strokes itself. So. Okay. Let me think here. What colors do we have? It goes. Goes, you know, lots of yellows, a little bit of pink, a little bit of purple, purple, pink, mm -hmm. and then the darks and the gray. Mm -hmm. Try to think of okay, this color I could probably get away with using a lighter version up here to create some harmony. These lighter areas underneath could be used in the hills. The pinks are the same that I can use under here. So a lot of times, what I'm kind of thinking about is where can I, you know unify when I'm for doing my old friend no one yeah well quick do a little bit of blue into there oh maybe a tiny bit of ultra phthalo green maybe mixed into it a little bit oh yeah You'll pay for that. It's going to stick to you. Uh, 
it's already on my clothes and I haven't even done anything yet. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's magnetic. <laughs> and look how purple it is. I love it. Perfect. Did you put ultramarine blue in it too? A touch of ultramarine and a touch of the phalo green. And which you have the the quinacridone? Yeah, that's what I'm using so far. Okay. Okay. I've already tested that for Lavender Festival. It makes beautiful lavenders and purples. Oh, I bet, yeah. Not that I'm going to do oils for Lavender Festival, let me just say that. Okay. I won't be that confident yet. Right. What did you yeah. use for that, for that pinky color? Um, uh, it's the same as here, but I added more quinacridone back in and more okay. white. Okay. And I'm just kind of looking on my palette again. I have all this paint that it's going to dry up if I don't use it today. And it's made of the same colors. So just so you know, all these colors I added, besides there is a quinacridone magenta on here, but otherwise they're all the same. So all these colors were made using this palette. I can't really judge them very well in this palette box. So I'm kind of bringing them up just so I can kind of see who's on here. And be a little more thoughtful about this one than I was about the last one, actually kind of pre-mixing some different colors that I think might either play well together or rep represent kind of what we're seeing a little bit, hopefully, in Linda's photo. But this is not Linda's palette, per se. I have no idea what Linda's palette is, but not well, I think she was using a whatever palette we worked on. The quinacridone, phthalo yeah. green. Mm -hmm. was... Yellow ochre. And um, in one of my paintings, I, I put a speck of Indian yellow in the, in the yellow ochre just to brighten it. So yeah, I don't have um, yellow ochre on my palette. And I rarely, rarely do. But it was, I was very impressed with how beautiful that yellow ochre was. And to get a variation in that palette, I think I'm going to um, switch the yellow ochre to Indian yellow sometimes or the Hansi yellow and just see what I get. Yeah, you'll have all transparent colors will be your only issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are almost all transparent colors that I've got. In fact, only one that's not is a cad yellow or a cad red medium. And I haven't yeah. even touched it. That feels so cool, not in the cool Fonzie way, just in temperature wise. <laughs> not Fonzie cool. Not Fonzie cool. Freezer. Hey. Cool. Hey. Well, he's getting to be an old man, you know. And I saw a picture of him the other day. He's yeah. good. He is. Good. Yeah, it's kind of depressing. Yeah, it reminds me of myself. <laughs> Same. <laughs> the actor. Yeah. yeah, I think I think he's seventy seven or seventy eight. I'm yeah. getting up there. Yeah, about, that's about right. Seventy seven and seventy six are not bad ages. To be. No, no, they're not. Better than being on the other side of the dirt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. All the old good actors are dying. Of That's kind of what happens. I know. Isn't that a shame? <laughs> Just part of life. Those no. folks don't have any good doctors to worry about. No. <laughs> Is that a thalo green on the right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. 
just trying to mix. Did you mix phthalo green with the uh, the cad red? Yeah, right now I'm thinking more about just light and dark a little bit here. It's going to be a warm dark. I don't know if that's right. Maybe I'll add a little more blue, maybe a little more phthalo green. I don't think I want it too warm in this foreground shadows. Well, this is a good class in color mixing too. Yeah. Yeah. I learned the most from when he's doing stuff like this mm -hmm. and and talking out loud as to why he's doing it. I need a little bit. I don't because a lot of people will just teach a class and they'll just go from one color to the other until they have it there. And I can't see where they're going with it. And I like that he explains that. Agreed. Agreed, agreed. I like the next one. I like that you said that while I was not explaining it the whole <laughs> time. But um, yes, so I'm, I just took my cool shadow. I've got a greener version and a bluer version. And then with the bluer version, I grabbed it and I had just a touch of white. And I've got this kind of gray blue. And I feel like um, from what Linda said, that this might be kind of a nice color on the tops of the bushes, but they're not being hit by light. It's just the radiant of the sky. It's not a bright, but it's a little bit lighter. The top of the bush will be just a little bit lighter than the bottom of the bush. Um, trying to see what other colors are standing out on here that I don't have. There's a lot of yellow in this painting. So I'm thinking at the top, we've got kind of a grayed down yellow. Maybe I'll take a little bit of that bush, top of the bush there, mix some of this, mix it green. Kind of a beautiful color, but it doesn't look like it gets to do much. Maybe I'll bring some of that down and use a little bit possibly in some of the foliage. Um, and now I just want to gray this down. So I've got green, a light kind of a gray green. When I want to dull that down or get rid of the green, what am I going to do? Red. Red. That quinacridone red, it only takes a tiny, tiny little bit of that. Yep, a lot less. That than goes that. a long way. Well, and then the cat reds even more so. True. Do you have light or medium cat red on there? I believe medium. Nope, light. Okay. Good question. Interesting color. I don't know even what that would be. Putty. Putty, yeah. And do I want to take it towards a touch of pink, maybe? There we go. I like yeah. that. Perfect. Good. Woo! Okay. How does one start such a thing? Okay. I guess like I like to do with my quinacridone color. I have a question for you, Michael. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I think we all know that colors are affected by the colors next to them. Yeah. So here you're paint, you know, you're mixing up your colors. You're deciding what you're going to use. How do you account for that? How do you adjust? Do you do it on the fly? I mean, yeah, some of that. And, you know, I can step back. But yeah, with a challenge like this, where I don't want to say it's a race, but it's, you know, how much can I get done with, you know, with brush economy, um, you know, less strokes. Yeah, I just try to do the best I can. And that's one thing that's nice about having your palette up next to your painting is that it's they're in the same light. Whereas the one that's on my tabletop, it looks very much different for one it's in my shadow gotcha so yeah it can be tricky but yes if i'm way off i might just stop and you know remix and i know that these colors are really bright you know brighter than even in the photo so i'm kind of curious about that if i'm gonna let myself get away with that or all right so 
mostly pink with a little bit of blue on there. Double dip. And here we go. I'm just going to come across my mountain range, I guess. Okay. Whew, that is bright pink. Didn't know your mountains were made of bubble gum, Linda. <laughs> That's so cool. Bubble gum mountains. You can add some, per add the blue to it and it'll get purple. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Mm. Any gel in this one? No, yeah, that gel freaked me out. I didn't didn't use it after the uh, first fake video that we shot. Is it possible you just needed a whole lot less? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oops, I didn't take it up to the end there. That's kind of a little missed opportunity. So there we go, one brush stroke. We've got bubblegum mountains. Some days they're pink. They're pinky purple. Depends on the time of day or yeah. Time of day and this if it's south or nor oh, east or west. Like in the mornings, the east is sunshine orange, pink, and pale peachy colors, and the west is all pink and purple and blues. And then in in the evening, the west is all golden orange and still purple sometimes in the clouds. And then the east is all soft and pink and blue and gray. A lot of colors, I said. Get to see what that dog is eating. <laughs> Oh, so they got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That desert scene. The uh, famous old bubblegum ranch. I love it. <laughs> I like bubblegum anyway. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, They still make it? Of course. Um, yeah. Bazooka. Uh, yeah, they still make it. I used to my, like it with the cartoon in it. Yeah. yeah. My grandson sent me to a specific place to get them baseball cards. They even emailed me the dress and where to look in the shop and everything. And all those packs came with bubble gum in them. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. That's so, they, so can they keep those for like O future with the bubble gum in them to be like collector's items or? I guess, I don't know. No, the individual cards are the, they're more individual rather than, than the, oh, the, okay. the pack itself. Cause they were supposed to be random cards in the packs. Yeah, you can't see that what the cards are, right? No. Yeah. I didn't know kids still collected that kind of stuff. Oh, baseball cards, Pokemon cards. My grandson collects the Pokemon cards. Mm. Well, that was a couple of years ago. I haven't heard anything more about them for a while. So <laughs> they got really popular. I know <laughs> kids everywhere talking about Pokemon, Pokemon. <laughs> mm. Who is Pokemon? All right, so three brush strokes. Yep. So I'm changing from the lighter of that back to dark. So I want to make sure that my brush is pretty clean. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to just reflect and just go, okay, if I, you know, Wanting every brushstroke to count. 
what do I, you know, what can I do? Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got a little bit of dark on the left and then the lighter kind of top, what I'm hoping will work is the top of some of the shrubbery on the right. Now I'm going to go to the lighter color. And kind of hopefully give some shape to some of these shrubs here. The color's not that light, so maybe I'll have to come back in with a slightly lighter version of it. But Couple shapes I don't love yet. Yeah. And this is a very, uh, this brush is actually softer than I would normally use. So a little bit curious, maybe I'll go to a slightly firmer brush here. He's gonna barely dip this side. Mm -hmm. They've probably done that. Okay, well, then let's dip it into orange here. And we're going to dip. What uh, what red did you make that pink out of? Binocridone. Oh, right. Right, right, right. You fight over this. Move this over just a little bit here. So I've got my orange and pink on this side. Maybe I can use a couple touch more pink. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. Look how he's creating the top of those mountains. Beautiful. You're not wiggling nearly as much on this one as you did the other one. Yeah. Got my wiggles out. Got your wiggles out. <laughs> like it. Wow. Honestly, you, you make it look so easy when you're doing it. Yet if I sat down to try and do that, I wouldn't, I, I would just stop after five minutes. Amen. Oh, if you do it right, five minutes is all you need. <laughs> what do you think so? <laughs> I try to paint whenever Michael's painting and really what I find is I don't have much time to think about it. So I just do it. And um, I think that's a really good way to learn because usually when you have a bunch of time, you overthink it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just, you're painting that instinct. Right. That That's a good point. Great point. Yes. This will be an interesting double dip brush because one side's orange and the other side's more of a purpley mauvey color. So it's doing these interesting mixing. Mm. When I lived in upstate New York, I used to walk um, about a mile and a half down my road to the beach area, which was on the top of a big hill. And uh, I would lay down, I'd bring a, a towel or throw my shirt down on the, on the ground, and I'd lay down on it and watch the clouds go by. Mm. And watch the sunset come in. It was just so gorgeous there. But so cold in the winter. <laughs> They're having snow up there today. Yeah. We're having snow here today. It's been snowing all day. It's all day. Oh, really? Yeah. Good grief. 
yesterday we had a whiteout. Oh, wow. I think 20 degrees was warm. Yeah. Whiteout makes for a very easy 30 brush stroke painting. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Does your mother think you're as funny as we do? My mom? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have a pretty similar sense of humor. <laughs> Serious? I'm just, yeah. She your mom is so nice. She at least gets it, you know, like when I'm being a smart <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm rarely serious or, you know, mean on purpose. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't imagine that. I think this is seven, correct? Yeah. Yes. I'm not counting. I'm, you know, without being whatever, but I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> well, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> but darker gray above that, do you think? Yeah, maybe we'll see how far, it, what it looks like at 10, because 10 is a good number. Well, I gave you to number 15 on this one. Oh, okay. Hairs are flying all over the place there for a second. Like, please make a nice accidental shape. You've obviously frightened your brushes into doing what you want them to do. <laughs> will them into will them into doing what I want, yeah. Yeah, because because <laughs> I I think I'm going to do that, but mine are not doing what I want. <laughs> I've obviously not I've not put that fear into them. Yeah, you need to have a stern conversation with them. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's funny too like sometimes I'm like oh how do I mix this color and I just am thinking about how I'll mix it and all of a sudden it just appears like sometimes I think I can just will things into being <laughs> yeah not so much well not always for sure don't mm -hmm. all right so is that, is that 10 there Yes. All right, we'll take a pause and look at it really quickly. Get it so it's not so glary, but it's interesting. Well, I guess I can still do that brush, brushing up and down. Um, Cause this actually has a lot more color than is appearing on the monitor. I'm seeing a lot more oranges. It's a lot more variation. Mm. Oh, I find rarely does when you take a picture and put it on the computer, it rarely is the same. Um, yeah, you know, not the same colors. I mean, there's a difference in the way they actually look in person and the way they look on the computer. You know, absolutely. Yeah, and that's a lot to do with the glare and then just the limitations of the camera and the light in the room. Yeah. yeah.
did that spot show up or is that just invisible no. too? Yes, I think it's very, very little. Yeah, it's just a little bit lighter. I just want to kind of have a lightest spot in the sky. Um, when you cast the shadow on it, I can see it, but the light overhead is really bright. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Claire, get that weight out there. Mine. Mine. I, I know fingers they... count. What's that? Do fingers count? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it's just coming no, me. Don't but, count. Yeah. A rough crowd. <laughs> um, okay, I see one. One of the darkened part of the sky. I think this yellow area is almost too big. So let's just slightly darken that. This thirteen. Yes. Oh, there, I picked up my brush on accident. Mm -hmm. Funny because I can't see it. So I wanted to pick up the brush to actually see what mark I had just made that was behind it. So there we go. Did that help to bring a little bit cooler down so it wasn't just a big, huge yellow area? Yeah. 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 So much. I don't like these two dots here of these two clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and connect those. Well, you have a lot of extra strokes available. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true yeah you have strokes you haven't even used yet you haven't used half of them or barely and you have the cactus to put in oh yeah cactus Ooh, yeah. Oh. okay mm -hmm. yeah still a little splotchy there so what was that 14 so I'm just I have 15 linking up things really quickly here because I, I just feel like it's almost too exciting up here at the top of this scene. There we go. And that count. Yeah, that counts. So now let's get some cactus. Hello. Michael's not letting me off the hook. Your microphone's open. I know, but I like to hear that Michael's not going to work. <laughs> Gonna have to figure out a painting spot. Yeah. <laughs> cactus and a little bit of and then dark on the other side mm. see, but this brush is a long filbert so really long bristles and really soft so i've never tried double dipping a soft filbert brush you could be making a dangerous mistake right now yeah with this big dark shape right here in the middle oh, I'm scared. it could be perfect perfect Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like a cactus. Yep. Uh -huh. Don't pay any attention to us. We'll say anything. Yeah, no, I, 
You guys are those two guys in um, the Muppets sitting up in the yep. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> balconies. Exactly what I thought of. <laughs> I've seen better, worst I've ever seen. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> I feel more like the Swedish chef. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Borga, 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 Is that first like to have a little tangent going with the um, orange in the sky? Mm -hmm. That's a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to see if I have an extra. Mm -hmm. Value team. Mm -hmm. difference between a tangent and a tantrum i just want to get out i i think you do both on purpose <laughs> this is the part i really wanted to see because i'm always afraid to make that big black mark across you uh -huh. know a pretty sky yes it never mm -hmm. comes out straight uh, I don't know why I just picked up my brush again. Yeah, it's it's hard to remember what I'm actually doing. We'll give you grace. Uh, all right. I think I'm just, you know, and they're not quite the right shapes for cactuses, but. Put a bush in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What what What's my brush stroke count? I have no idea. Yeah. It's like 22 or something. I don't think it's that many, is it? Yeah. yeah. Many. Probably is. I haven't okay. counted the ones for the cactus. All right. Last couple brush strokes. I'm just going to kind of come around and mess up the ground. My trail's a little too perfect. <laughs> I'm just going to mess up some edges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I um, need to soften this one? I guess I probably should, huh? Just so we can see what's going on. Yeah. Woo! It's going to be scary around the cactus. I'll do that part last. It's funny to hear you say it's going to be scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Got a little bit dirty in the lightest spot there. Perfect, Michael. Beautiful. There we go. I think oh, I it's guys. Like I like the real subtlety up in here. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah, I don't love some of these, you know, weird shapes in here and stuff. You know, that'd be, you know, if I had an extra brush stroke, I'd just <laughs> break that and you know make that a little more interesting. You do. You didn't use them all. Here we go. It's beautiful. Does it, do those colors kind of speak? To them? Yes, mm -hmm. they do. Perfect. Looks like a desert. Yeah. It's like the shortest class I've taught in a long time. We're only 10 minutes over. It's <laughs> 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 uh, having to uh, sign off. Um, you know, and I would look at it like that. See this little tiny spot of light right here? Like, I don't know if that's useful, it might be a little distracting. Um, but all in all, it's just got a nice freshness to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it has an almost plain air feel to it, but mm -hmm. and yeah, happy accidents, you know, Bob Ross, and you get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the soft, abstract feel of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Was that was that 21 or was there more? I, I might have missed a couple. <laughs> I think it was about 21 or 22 stroke. Yeah. So the other one was what, 16 and 21? 
Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. I had but, 11 um, on the other one. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even have the underpainting like the other one i could leave areas not touched but this was on white um and even like the fact that this cactus has kind of got a funny little line to it i still kind of like that i like kind of this you know natural cactuses too don't they linda it, it's authentic actually they sometimes when they dry up they you know like they're dying um, they don't necessarily all get the arms on them. Like sometimes they'll, I don't know what the animals right. eat, eat the yeah. roots or something and they decay and it looks very natural. Isn't there another cactus that's just straight up and down like that dog too? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure is. Great. All right. Well, I will try to get photos of them. Um, you know, after they kind of, dry it and get a, some of the shininess away but that was a ton of fun and um it really was kind of scary and intimidating but it was really fun um and i'm glad it worked out reasonably well and um <laughs> yeah i'd be curious you know you pick something simple i mean it could even just be a sky right just sunset sky color so you don't have that chance because where it would start to fall apart is if i really started to muddy it up Right, yeah. and, you know, where I, I got the greens and the oranges and, you know, all these colors that could really affect each other. Um, but I think the most useful thing for me is that pre-mixing of the colors and literally thinking about the brush stroke before I do it. I'm not just brushing. It's purposeful. It's, pa it's painting with intention. Mm -hmm. That's, um, yeah. Go ahead. That's perfect because um, the pre-mixing for me, to, you that showed me that what you could do with that if you thought about what you wanted to do. Awesome. Okay. All right, I'll switch over. I think it helps make things a little more spontaneous too because you're jumping right into the next color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you used a more harmonious, you know, because this has got all the colors in it, right? Besides, there's no real strong blues but it's got all the colors. So this is a little more difficult. If I was doing more of a tonalist piece or, you know, where it's more just about values and not about the colors as much, I think you could get away with it. Um, but yeah, I would just be curious to have you guys, those of you who want to, um, to experiment with it and just count, you know, and if you come back and, you know, oh, I did this in 40 or 50 brush strokes, that's still really impressive, right? Mm. So I'm gonna can we do it in little study size? hundred percent. You can do whatever you want. You know, I, I'm sure somewhere there out there, there may be rules for this, but I actually looked it up and couldn't find any. The only one I ever saw was a 30 stroke portrait challenge. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there we go. And how do I change my camera? I'm going to do a couple of those. Great. Yeah, there, that was a lot of fun. All right. Well, thank you guys mm -hmm. so very much. I can't wait to see your final projects. Um, uh, neither can we. <laughs> <laughs> I finished my thirty by my, my final project in thirty brush strokes. So mm. great. Well, uh, I'm well, a little nervous because it was sky, you right? Said... If it was sky in a tree. It would count. Yeah. Yeah. If you could do it. Yeah. And then um, otherwise, I'll see uh, those of you who can join us tomorrow for uh, just kind of the painting time. Um, and I appreciate that time, Michael, that you take to do that. Yeah. I appreciate it. I yes, you appreciate thank you. It. Thank you. Your appreciation is appreciated. So great. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys in uh, 21 hours. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, 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 -